Donald Trump's tenure in the Oval Office has deeply divided an already fractured America. Get your free Trump, you're fired bumper stickers and postcards right here. I'm giving them out for free. Thank you to Donald J. Trump. Good luck tonight. Four more years, we counting on you. We praying for you. For decades, Democrat politicians like Joe Biden have taken black voters for granted. Barack Obama is the first president that I remember. Hey, this is where I'm supposed to be. That person looks like me. I actually didn't vote in the last election. The administration, in a new filing, asked the Supreme Court to abolish Obamacare. After he won, I kind of was like, wow, I messed up. I don't like how my health is being gambled on. President Trump has been trying to eliminate the temporary protected status programs, and this has left 200,000 people in a state of panic and worry. I'm in my final year of high school. I've thought about, is it even worth going to college if I don't know if my future is even going to be here in the U.S.? I feel like, you know, a 17-year-old shouldn't be having those thoughts. Deportation can start as early as March 2021. What's at stake is my parents, right? My life, my future. Alrighty, let the games begin. <laughs> I did what I said I was gonna do. I walked in and voted for President Donald J. Trump for term two. I got uh, 25 medium and 25 lemon peppers. Switch it to the Kamala side. <laughs> I just don't want it behind me. <laughs> That's all I have. It's your guy. <laughs> Not my guy. <laughs> I could have seen enough about Trump, like just through social media, just videos of Trump doing his Trump thing to know that that is just a bad person. Think about, all right, what, what president in your era has put $500 billion to the African American Dude, community? What president, what president in your era what, literally wouldn't what, denounce white what supremacy on national television president has, during a presidential What president has secured has continuous funding for HBCUs? He said, Fra they he said, said white supremacists fucking stand by. So Stand he says, stand by, stand, stand back, back whatever you want me to say. Do you denounce white supremacy? Yeah, he has said it plenty of times. That's the Bro, point. Why, then why didn't he say it on the... Definitely some of my friends from Georgetown uh, are definitely not supporters of the president. I think the firmness in my beliefs comes from being consistently pushed on it. I mean, there is a, a benefit of having people ask, well, you know, why the hell do you believe what you believe? What makes you, what makes you so sure? And I can't sit here and talk to you about knowing the other side and knowing what it's like to be a minority uh, who identifies as a conservative and then say things like, well, yeah, I don't really want to talk to anyone who, <laughs> who disagrees with me. Not only is that hypocritical as hell, but I don't know if it has any value. There's something you can do genuinely about talking to people who disagree with you. It makes you really ask yourself, is this what I believe in? Is this, are these values that I hold? And here we are at the polling place. To finally vote. And it looks like there's no line, thank the Lord, so. <laughs> my family's not very politically active at all. So I think my interest with politics was really found by myself. I can remember being a freshman in, in high school and waking up at six in the morning watching C-SPAN to try and ID congressmen and women to see who's who and what's what. Alrighty. Let the games begin. <laughs> I did what I said I was gonna do. I walked in and, um, you know, voted for, uh, you know, President Donald J. Trump for term two. I'm a black conservative Protestant at a predominantly white and liberal Catholic university. If I was gonna sit there and choose my friends based off of my demographics or having things and, and you know, are meeting all these boxes and criteria and having this set of identity, then I probably would not have as many friends as I do and I'd probably be a very lonely person, so. Arriba la familia, abajo el odio, arriba la familia.
familia. Abajo el odio, arriba la familia. We are here today advocating for permanent residency for people with TPS. What we're doing on this caravan is promoting people to go out and vote. We've been on the road for a month, almost two, and it's several TPS recipients, and it's me and my mom. TPS is a temporary protected status, a legal status that was given to um, people from 13 different countries that were fleeing from their countries due to natural or political disaster. When Donald Trump came into office, one of the first things he did was that he canceled the program. As of now, there's a chance that our families could be separated and thousands of other families. Dealing with the cancellation of TPS has taken a big toll on me and my family. And I, since then, I've struggled more in school. I've had sleepless nights. <laughs> and I wish all of you knew how that felt. I'm not able to vote this year. I'm 17. Um, it, it makes me pretty sad because me being a U.S. citizen ch child that has two parents that have TPS, I'm their voice. Hi, my name is Clarice, and this is my story about how I'm living my best, happiest life, even with a chronic illness. I was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis at birth, so I want to advocate that life doesn't have to stop because you're sick, because being sick doesn't stop life. So since the 2016 election, I started being a little bit more vocal about my illness and to start really being more activist in it. Cystic fibrosis, it's a genetic disease, but it is a progressive disease. So the later throughout your life, the, the worse it starts to get. This vest is a common um, therapy treatment for CF. The Affordable Care Act, it's given me kind of like peace of mind. You're trying to get better, you're trying to focus on your health, and then to all of a sudden be like, well, that's all you're gonna pay for. It's just kind of an awful thing to put on someone to like make them decide, like, well, you can go bankrupt or, you know, you can keep living. It's just, I can't imagine like having to have to think about that. As young Republicans, conservative, moderates, and those disaffected by our political system, we intend to continue that mission to look forward and provide a forum and platform for a new and more perfected party. The issues important to Generation Z should no longer be ignored. Are we saying anything about systemic racism in this platform, or? I don't think we don't, we should. Uh... It's a great question, and I'm gonna be frank, I have a very different viewpoint than I say most people do on that. I would encourage us to put language that says that this country isn't inherently racist. It isn't, there's nothing intrinsically yeah, racist like about that. it. Yeah. I would say that the, ra the country is only as racist as the occupants of offices of, of power, right? Um, I feel like our platform right now could just add a little bit more conservatism to it. Yeah. I think we probably brought in our support, so. Yeah, El, would you mind making that note? Yeah, I, yeah so I, I'm with you. Um, change can be a good thing. And the president is a change agent, and I'm hoping to be a change agent for my party as well from a Generation Z's perspective. Hey, Mom. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Uh, very uh, anxious and uh, been watching, watching a, probably too much about this election. Yeah. You know, with uh, with the health care, with all that going on with the Supreme Court, my hope is uh, that there are enough people that will make enough noise that they're going to have to protect the people with pre-existing conditions. Yeah, because my medicine, I mean, it's just, 
astronomical. I mean, right. Trikafta alone, but then also my enzymes. I mean, that's what, three grand a month? <laughs> Trikafta is the new gene modifier drug that came out late last year. Not a cure, but I mean, it's like pretty, pretty darn close. I mean, it went from, you know, you probably didn't make it to kindergarten to, I mean, now you can plan out your whole life. Like it's like becoming a manageable disease. For the first time in my life, I don't have to like have that thought in the back of my head of, you know, like life is kind of short. I at first did not like the idea of my mom being on the bus because she has health issues. Yo tengo mi hijo Benjamín. Él cuando supo de la caravana, él me dijo, "Mami, yo me voy." Ese día yo lloré mucho. Y yo dije, si mi hijo tiene el coraje de subirse, aunque yo tenga diabetes, aunque yo sea de alto riesgo, también yo subo al bus. My parents, they've been here for over 20 years. If my parents were to be deported, I would have to be the legal guardian of my sister. A college student shouldn't have to have the responsibility of trying to get their life together and, well, a child. As you can see, people are still voting in much of the country. The lines have been long all through the day. When you go out and vote today, think about all the families that could be separated because of this administration. Deportations for TPS can start as early as March 2021. That's why I ask all of you to go out and vote against hate. Go out and vote for our families, for my family. This most unusual and important race for the White House at the finish line. Votes being counted, polls starting to close. Uh, I'm just trying not to lose my mind. I started announcing some of the states. Oklahoma, Kentucky. Whoa, New York coming in strong. Unlike any we've ever covered, and we don't know what the country's decision is. We spent the last three days watching Donald Trump's huge lead from the Fox News decision desk can now project that former Vice President Joe Biden will win Pennsylvania and Nevada, putting him over the 270 electoral we votes. We were he needs getting ready to, to win this election. Frankly, we did win this election. I pledge to be a president who seeks not to divide. But unify. President Trump is doubling down on his refusal to concede.